what we developed is a set of very rigorous criteria that will now be able to distinguish the difference between a cancer cell and a really good stem cell. Both make copies of themselves very well. The problem is cancer stem cells don't differentiate into something you want useful, that you want to use, uh, which is what it really a tumor is. And we need to be able to note those differences. Our most recent work now shows that we have a litmus test, if you will, a set of criteria that will distinguish the good stem cells from the bad stem cells. There are many drugs that have identified that kill both, but unfortunately when you think about administering that to a patient, that's not really what you want. You want something that preferentially kills the cancer stem cell. What our research provides us is the two cellular reagents to do the test. So now we can look at a panel of thousands and thousands of drugs under robotic screening modalities and compare what drugs kill the cancer stem cells but then use that exact same dose and those same drugs in combination on normal stem cells and make sure they don't kill normal stem cells. If that occurs, and that's what we're trying to identify, those are the drugs we want to apply and think about in terms of new chemotherapy for different types of tumors. Now, a library, like most public libraries, provides both information that you can visit the library and read and take the information with you in your head, um, or you can maybe borrow the book. Um, and look at it. And the, the library really here works the same way. What we're doing is we're trying to create multiple pluripotent stem cell types and analyze what genes are important to differentiate them to blood, to neurons, to all the different things that one would want to apply in the clinic. But we want to provide a library of information of what those genes are. So we envision this to be very applicable to a lot of basic uh, science endeavors worldwide. Um, and, and I think that's where the academic partnerships come in. But I think there's a very interesting potential of uh, companies that are very interested in their drugs and their clinical focuses uh, to also use the library. They may already have molecules that are able to differentiate these cells or target genes where we're providing lots of information of how those genes work in human pluripotent stem cells. And I think there's a, that will probably end up being one of our biggest opportunities. The Institute, uh, because we're made up of, of several laboratories using all common space and equipment, uh, spends a lot of time choosing and being very selective on the types of equipment that we're using, but more importantly, the technologies and potential development of those technologies that it will, it will give us. We've been really fortunate because most of that has been uh, supported uh, by Ministry of Research Innovation and Canadian Foundation of Innovation to allow us to work with companies that create this equipment. This isn't a company providing a piece of equipment on a single vision of what they think it may apply, but actually working together with the academics to create new applications. So from an equipment instrumentation level, the Institute has some incredibly powerful tools that makes it easier to do the work that's being done around the world, uh, and in some, in some cases in pharmaceutical companies right now, but more importantly allows us to ask questions about stem cells that others really just can't, uh, full stop. Um, that obviously raises great academic opportunities, but huge applied research opportunities. It's really interesting times for McMaster's Institute and, and all the other neighboring institutes in the Toronto region because there is a huge interest in stem cells, now not only coming from basic researchers and academics, but also from uh, companies that essentially want to apply that research toward the clinic. We've developed a lot of partnerships in the area of screening human stem cells, both at the chemical level and at the gene level, in terms of how that those cells respond to those chemicals or downregulation or upregulation of those genes. We get a lot of interest from specifically pharmaceutical companies and otherwise. I think in the last few years, because of some of the new visions here at McMaster and around the Ontario region, we've gotten a, a heightened interest. I specifically came here three years ago to establish the Stem Cell Institute at McMaster and really work together with the other institutes in the Toronto region. I think there's a level of collaboration that money and funding and support can't buy. Uh, there's an intellectual depth here that I think is very unique. That takes years and years to establish that cannot be purchased. 
And that's why I stay and continue to do my research here. There's certainly a focus around the Toronto region, McMaster, Waterloo, places in Guelph doing some wonderful uh, large animal uh, stem cell biology also. There are a lot of regional hospitals and the McMaster University Hospital that uh, are focused on, on clinical trials. The trialists here are top notch um, and they understand how to move things from bench to bedside, if you will. It would be very difficult to imagine that this particular region uh, isn't in the top, top of all stem cell research going on.